It's about meaningful and positive human relationships. And the money is indicative of how well you have solved a set of problems. And so is that sort of your attitude when you're going on to a show floor? Or do you have a different um, or adjacent philosophy that you follow? No, that, I think that's spot on. That's, that's my philosophy. You know, relationships equal ROI. I just measure my I, re, I measure my return based on relationships and vendors measure on dollars and cents. But at the same at the, at the end of the day, they're the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. This is a very interesting conversation because, I, and I'm I'm going to speak on behalf of women. Women do not think at all like how you both just described that. <laughs> so really, like, that's interesting. And, but but I know this about a lot of men and angel investors. They think exactly like what you said. Relationships are ROI. Uh, for women, relationships are I buy people. I don't even think about the numbers because the numbers always follow. So I look at it from an opposite angle. Um, and that's something that we, we've talked about a few times on the show. Um, cybersecurity only has, I believe, about 19 to 20% women in it uh, industry-wide. So we're trying to bring more women on board in every capacity possible. Um, we're having you know uh, CEOs like Tina williams Caroma, and uh, we had um, Dana Mantilia on last a couple weeks ago. She was fantastic. And uh, to really bridge some of these communication gaps because I feel that that's something that there's uh, there's an issue between men and women and, and this is not just in cybersecurity this is in a lot of different facets but it's truly about how how uh, communication is perceived and also retained and then how is that then communicated back during a sales process so have you seen any challenges with this on your own just as you've traveled around you know the country or any dealings that you've maybe seen some ways that women could help impact sales or uh, bring additional revenue in you know, I, I don't want to sound, you know, gender biased, but um, I, I noticed that when I'm, when I'm out socializing, because I mean, I, again, I, I don't go to the bars because I want to get drunk. I go to the bars because that's where everybody else is. And I'm just trying to grab a drink with somebody else to build the relationship. It's just, it's just touch points. Mm -hmm. that's, that's all I focus on is touch points. Just going, going back to what, what Josh just said. It's, it's those interactions. It's those touch points that are so critical because at the end of the day, the more, t and statistically, I think it was 13. That if you have to, after you have 13 interactions or touch points, they typically tend to buy. Was it was the was once today I did. But this was like 15 mm -hmm. years ago, but might still be the same. I don't know. But that's where the touch points are critical. So the more times you can see them, be like, hey, Bob or Jim or Joe or whatever. It's like, that, that's all. That's all I'm looking for. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, back in the day, they it was all about rapport. You hear that word thrown out quite a bit. And it's not something that, unfortunately, I don't hear it very often. I don't hear about rapport building, um, which is very valuable. So I'm really interested in this, Maggie. Um, our, and I know you can't speak on behalf of all women. And this is interesting to me. I'll give you a little bit of context because I was at the Cybersecurity Summit last week. And I heard some fabulous... Um, women just speak on all kinds of topics from DEI to the hardcore tech stuff to thought leadership. And that was the only room that was packed. Mm -hmm. So there were other rooms there, other seminars, but the, the women in cyber, it was packed. And I mean, there was a tribe there, right? So these women are, uh, they're, they're, they're on it and, I know a few of them personally, so shout out to uh, to Tina and Eileen, the fabulous uh, security leaders here in the, in the Midwest. Um, and so, w I guess one thing I didn't hear is that emphasis on building relationships. So, is it? And I know this this is a caveat. I mean, you you can't speak on behalf of all women, but I think there are a lot of women who are listening here. I'm just saying it like I'm trying way harder than Charles to be gender neutral here, right? <laughs> I think I kind of see where you're going, but I'll let you. Yeah, yeah. So what 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 holds what holds women back from me making those relationships? I know it's intimidating, you know, because the relationships they would be making probably would be mostly with men. Um, is it be is it because there's the man factor there, or is there something deeply psychological that may be preventing women from going out and forming those meaningful relationships? I think it's a little bit of both. And for the love of God, dear sisters, don't ring me up for this. Um, 
This is just my opinion and my perception. Um, I think that, number one, we're already working in an industry where there's no trust. So there's that. Then you're talking psychologically. Men don't trust women. Women don't trust men. That's a very common commonality I see. Then you put it into this industry. Um, a lot of what I see with women in this industry in particular is they bond together, which is fantastic. I'm all about that sisterhood, you know, uh, women investing in other women-owned companies, things of that nature. I see a lot of women intimidated partnering with men. And what I see with men is it's a good old boys club still, very much so in a lot of uh, angles. That doesn't mean... Uh, I, I feel men are more oftentimes willing to listen to women than women are to other women. So it's very much a who do you know type of thing still in this industry in particular. I've noticed that against other industries. Uh, it's, it's just a little bit different. And mm. so I think that it's um, how do we break those barriers? How do we efficiently communicate at different angles? Um, you know, I... I have always been the type where if I would not um, go to dinner with you or have a drink with you or, or that type of thing, I'm not going to do business with you. That doesn't mean no favors once you reach a certain level, right? I, and that was Maggie mm -hmm. back in my 20s. Um, now it's, okay, well, even though I don't ever see us being friends outside of work, how could I still work this project with you? Or how could I still get this deal together? Or how do we strategize mm -hmm. that partnership? Then you bring in factors like, people from different cultural backgrounds, different parts of the world. Now you're adding a whole other bag of worms to that. And especially when you're talking other parts of the world, there's a lot of countries where women are looked at differently. Mm. That's a whole other, a whole other issue, especially in cybersecurity, because we have a lot of people from all over the world that are very high level that are investors themselves. Um, I've seen this industry in particular has, um, and I love that because it's really a tapestry of talent. And I think that I wish more women would host summits and invite more men and present a different type of uh, strategic panel uh, to mm -hmm. talk about this and strategic partnerships. Right. Um, that's a really roundabout way. I could go on this topic for hours and I'm going to. Yeah. You, you know, I, well, one thing I was wondering when I was there last week, I was like, it's good to have a consortium of women who meet together and form their own thing, you know, but at some point, like you said, the men and the women have to meet, you know, it would be really nice to not have to have women in cyber, but just to have people in cyber and to have it, you know, equal and to provide opportunities for everyone. But the thing that I get stuck on all the time, um, and maybe Charles, you can, uh, maybe you can speak a little bit to the DEI strategies that companies are employing these days and how that's impacting the bottom line. Um, but I see that a lot of people want to include women. They want to include people of color. Obviously, there are these huge DEI, uh, DEI initiatives. But if I'm being honest, I, can, I can't speak for women, but I can speak for, you know, I'll just speak for myself. Um, I can't speak on behalf of everybody of color. But I'll say, you know, nothing really ever held me back that I know of. Caveat, I could be intentionally delusional, right? Delusion does provide some sense of confidence. Um, but in my world, I don't think there are a lot of things that are holding me back. You know, so I always ask, like, why, why is there not this push of women and people of color into cybersecurity? Um, and I'm wondering if it's sort of the mindset that that is the way it is. Um, you know, there is, there are these inequities. And so to even challenge it and to say that the inequities are more I, more of an idea rather than a reality. Okay, everybody, I can feel, I can see the arrows <laughs> blotting out the sun <laughs> right now. It's just, Charles you know. Like, why am I here right now? This is a yeah, really Yeah, yeah. So topic. these are, these, these are the opinions of my own and they do not represent <laughs> Charles Payne or Maggie Dillon or anybody else. But it's just my observation. It's my true um, experience. So, all right, now that I'm going to lay that aside, anybody who wants to come after me, come after me. Um, but, uh, Charles, what role does DEI um, or, let's just stick with the DEI, what, what are the trends? You know, is it going anywhere? Or, or is there more of a push? Are companies increasing their quotas? And I hate that we have to even talk about it in, in, in that sense, quotas. 
Um, is that a factor when you're looking to invest in a company or is it something that you should just disregard and sort of let the universe play it out? You know, I've actually spoken to a few people in Ghana um, for investment purposes and um, I, I'm, I'm going to admit that I'm probably agnostic. I don't, I don't look at color, race or gender as, as a deciding factor. I look at what's going to make money. I mean, that's the only discriminating factor I discriminate against is if it can make money or is it going to lose money. And that's the only thing I have that I discriminate against on that part. But, mm -hmm. you know, going back to like your DAI question, it's like, um, yeah, I used to teach as a professor for a while. And I would, I would notice that more, more inherently as a, as a white male speaking for myself in this case, I would apply for every job. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be like, you know, trash collector to CEO. I would apply for everything down the line because I know at one point in time, I'm going to hit the recruiter that's going to say, hey, this doesn't make any sense. Why do you apply for this? You should apply for over here. And that's how I got the job at Amazon, which I, I didn't take. And it's a long story there. But I actually re I applied for some crazy stuff. And the recruiter says, why did you apply for this? You're supposed to be over there. I'm like, I don't know. I was just clicking buttons. He's like, let me go move this application over there for you. And that was the difference mm -hmm. I see between between a lot of the different cultures. Women, maybe some minorities, don't apply to everything. You know, for me, and I'm just speaking for me, I apply to everything. I don't care what it is. It's like if I'm trying to get a job at X, Y, and Z company, it's like I apply for every everything that's there. I, I just apply to, so I can hit all the different recruiters because I know the way the system works. But mm -hmm. I know that some of my students that were female would look at it and be like, I don't, I don't qualify for this. It's a, it's a, it says it's a entry-level position, but it wants five years worth of experience. I'm like, it doesn't mean five years worth of hands-on experience. Just click apply. Apply. You have mm -hmm. to apply. If you don't try, you'll, you'll never succeed. You have to apply. It's, it's like, I know I'm, cause I'm teaching them. I'm, I'm talking with them on a daily basis. Like they have the skills, but they're mm -hmm. just, they're, they're a little bit skittish about applying. Cause they're like, Oh, I don't meet the job description. The job descriptions are crazy. So just circling back to, you know, everything that we're saying back again for DEI, it's, um, it, it's a crazy race. And I focus on, um, diversity and inclusion, obviously. So mm -hmm. whenever I can, that's necessary. I, absolutely. Because at the same token, and Disney's favorite saying is, you know, they they get they they get their their imagination and they get all their creativity from diversity, which is true. I mean, I mm -hmm. I, I live in this little box for myself, and I would I wouldn't see things the same perspective that Maggie does, or even even you, Josh. So it's like we we need everybody to be part of the same page because that's the only mm -hmm. way we're going to grow as a community. And, and I, I've said this I don't know how many times, but if you look at the difference between an adversary or a a, a black hat, you know, criminal. Versus like the white hat, the white hats, you know, when I was in IFSI SAC and I was working in the financial, financial sector, we, we couldn't disseminate our information or our TTPs or IOCs and indicators of compromise until like, you know, a week or two or longer after it's been sanitized and down the line. By that time, a whole bunch of other people have been hit. But you flip that script and then you actually talk about what the adversaries are doing. They're actually talking amongst themselves. I'm like, hey, I tried all this stuff. It doesn't work. Try something else. So it's mm -hmm. like the way that they're communicating is, is in real time. The way we communicate is like next month, literally. So it's like, mm -hmm. it's crazy. And that's, that's where we have a huge problem at yeah. know, on top of everything else. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're, if you're an employer and well, let me just say this, you say that whatever makes money, that's basically your discriminating factor, right? If you have half the population excluded, that's half the talent probability wise, you know, there might be an Einstein among women and minorities that you never tapped into. So including everybody will always impact the bottom line uh, positively. Number two, so three things. Number two, if you're, an, if, you're, if you're dumb enough to not hire the right person just because they're not male and white, that's, you will pay, your company will pay a tax, a stupidity tax, an idiot tax for not taking that opportunity. Number three, for all the minorities and the women who are listening to this, um, for everybody, not even just minority, just everybody, everybody who is um, a human being and of age, apply, 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 apply and talk to people because you just never know. So, OK, I'm off my soapbox. No, I, I want to I'm going to caveat exactly what you just said there. I, I have 15 years of executive headhunting experience and I cannot tell you how many times someone would apply to a position I was looking to recruit for. And even though they didn't match that position, I would look at their resume and say, hey. 
They don't match this search, but they match this search. And I would fill several searches with a candidate that didn't even apply for the one they thought they, they were. God bless you. For. And, and, and truly, I encourage, especially if you're coming into cybersecurity with no experience, do not let these parameters that society has developed, these old school recruiting texts, uh, technology uh, or, or societal standards it doesn't match anything that we're doing we are we are innovating at rapid speeds and we need as much help as we can and we're seeing positions mm -hmm. being created created out of thin air based off of experience uh, or personality or you know whatever the it factor is for that particular company so um i just love what both of you have said in that regard because it's true i i've i've, I've done it i've seen it i've helped people so i i apply